Hello everyone, my name is Frank Pineris and I'm here today to tell my story. I um, was one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, today I find myself uh, walking in Christ uh, as a believer and everything that I've learned from my experience I'd like to share with you. Without further ado, let me get into that now with my friend Eric Wilson who has been pivotal in helping me guide the tran guide my steps in this transition from my former life to where I am today. Of course, ultimately, it is my relationship with Jesus Christ and Jehovah God that has got me here. So, Frank, it's good to have you with us. Thanks, Eric. I'm glad to be here. So, let's start off with you just telling us a little bit about your background. Right, um, I'm born and raised in Sydney, Australia. Um, I come from a Greek Orthodox background, a Greek family. And being so, a large family as we were, we grew up in a tough neighbourhood of Redfern in Sydney, which was a quite an uh, experience in itself, obviously. Um, my love as I was growing up was sports and really loved playing rugby league. Um, soccer and cricket, anything that had to do with uh, the game of sport. I just loved it. So, um, grew up, uh, yeah, as a, in a big family and just loved my life. So tell me, do you understand the rules of cricket? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, well, 100%. You're a smarter man than I am. <laughs> <laughs> They're all very simple, actually, uh, Eric, but yeah. I'm sure you'll you'll get the uh, I'm sure you get the knack of the game. Okay, <laughs> one of these days. Yeah. So, uh, what precipitated your awakening? Okay, well, in the beginning, when I started learning um, the truth, if I can say that, um, with uh, one of Jehovah's Witnesses, the thing that uh, really um, caught my attention was the topic of the last days. And in that uh, discussion, which I was overhearing, by the way, I wasn't um, directly involved in that discussion, the term generation came up and um, it's the year 1914 as a starting date of Christ rule in heaven invisibly, which I thought it was quite unique. I've never, ever heard of that, that he actually started to rule, which was amazing. I thought, wow. And then uh, the discussion sort of led to that 1914, that generation, in other words, those young people that saw that time in their generation, they would not die off, but they would see the end. And I thought to myself, this was in the 1980s. Uh, it was explained to me that the generation, according to the Bible, that they were referring to was 70 to 80 years. So just do the math, 70 to 80 1914, 1994, or, you know, thereabouts. So I thought, you know, I'm in the 1980s, maybe, maybe we're very close to the end. What if they're right? And so this was uh, my thinking back then. And I thought, well, you know, what would it hurt to have a study with, one, uh, with this person? So we, a study started and started to learn many things uh, through the Live Forever book or the Red Rocket, I think it was called. And although some things I didn't gel with me, I thought, mm. are they enough to override this theme that the end is coming? And how, how bad would that be if I knew it was coming and I didn't do anything about it and mm. also help my friends? And that was my take. Right, that's what drives many witnesses. It's the fear that they're going to die or their friends will die eternally, and so they're driven to carry out the work that uh, the organization puts before them yes. because of that fear of death. That's more the, the driving factor, isn't it? Right, and going back to that question, um, there wasn't anything specific initially that started my awakening. However, the little... Um, incidences, if you like, or little adjustments in the teaching. And the generation teaching was one of them. And I think it was um, 
95 or 96, the year 95, 96, mm -hmm. there was an adjustment in that teaching of the generation because you obviously, you know. I remember that. Right. The generation now has long gone mm -hmm. and we're still here. Right. Uh, and so that was adjusted to be an, a new thought, new light to say that they weren't sure really. It was open-ended. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I remember Eric sitting in the Kingdom Hall when that announcement was made. I, I read through the Watchtower and I, I thought maybe there was something wrong there. Maybe the the elders would give me a uh, clarification on, on that point. And uh, I remember sitting there and I almost slumped to my chair in mm -hmm. disbelief. I thought, hang on, you actually don't know, <laughs> right? You don't know. What am I doing here? After decades of telling us they did know. Right. Yeah. I, I, I put my whole life on the line. Right. Stopped everything. I didn't invest in anything. I just thought, you know what, I'm going to put all my eggs in this one basket, this one hope, right. and give it all I've got because, you know, what else can I do? You know, I mean, that would be the logical thing would do mm -hmm. if God, if Christ is coming at that time. So you uh, you were telling me earlier that, uh, uh, or formerly, that you had even had a certain sum of money that you could have used and your family was encouraging you to use to buy a prop, some property and kind of get yourself established as a young man. That's correct. Yes, my father said to, to myself, uh, you know, he said, uh, you know, let's buy a little property together. Mm -hmm. um, and that was put off a little bit. Um, and then I thought, you know what, what can I do? Um, my other brother didn't want to get involved. There was, and I thought, well, dad, you know, what can I do? It's just been, you know, between me and him. And I just pushed forward with this um dream that was before me or the direction from the organization mm -hmm. that the end was here and i pushed back that aside because i thought you know what the end's going to come at least me being there maybe that might give my dad and mama hope and my brothers etc right so i put all that aside and just marched on i yes so you used that money right to pioneer didn't you exactly I started regular pioneering Based um, on the hope that the generation was a true calculation. Correct. Yeah. Mathematically spot on. Right. So such doctrines, mm. uh, which many excuse as just the mistakes of men, have played havoc with the lives of countless thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of Jehovah's Witnesses over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And I'm just one of many, I'm sure. Uh, that have done the same thing, right? You know, whether it's money they could have invested in something, whether it's a career they put off, you know, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that I'm just one of many. Yeah, definitely. I remember the watchtower you're talking about. The first time it was introduced, my wife was mystified. She couldn't even figure out exactly what they were saying. It was so vague. All we could get from it was that we don't know anymore what the generation means. All oh, right. Yes. And then I think they followed it up a year or two later with a further clarification, completely denying the possibility that a generation could be used to calculate how long the last days would be. Right. And I'll see if I can actually find that quote and put it up here uh, on on the screen. Yeah, exactly. And it really uh, threw me a curveball. It really confused me. I didn't really know mentally what to do um, should I stay should I go you now if I leave what's that going to look like mm -hmm. is it going to look like I'm serving God because of a date mm. you know so ultimately I decided to stay because I thought you know why am I serving God and it's not because <clears> of the date I'm actually serving him because I love him yeah and I just want to continue in that path but I was really flattened by that honestly mm -hmm. it really it shook me but I persevered, I kept going. So was that the end of it or did it get worse? Yeah, so um, for me, it was just drudgery after that. I mean, I did my best. I attended all the meetings. I continued to auxiliary where I could, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it wasn't the same. I wasn't the same. I was um, in two minds. I didn't know how to 
I mean, I, I just did my best. I just followed the procedures that I needed to do, right. you know, thinking I'll just wait. Hopefully the end will come one, one year after the next, day after day. And then a adjustment again came, I think it was in 2008. I think you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. And then a further one in 2000 and oh, was it 13 or 14? Oh, I can't remember. I'm going by memory here, but I think eight and then 10. Mm. And then the real change in, in uh, 16. 16, right. Yeah. Okay. So when that came, it just, I thought. Well, we should just explain for those who yeah. are new to okay, this yes. what, what that change was. Right. So basically, the, the doc, they resurrected the doctrine of the generations, which they had abandoned and specifically said could not be used to measure the length of the last days. And suddenly they were again using it to measure the length of the last days, but this time using uh, an artificial creation called the overlapping generation. Correct, yes. Mm. So when that change came out, well, there were a number of changes actually prior to that. Now it all just all happened very quickly, very mm-hmm. rapidly. And I was thinking to myself, what on earth is going on here? You know? Yeah. I remember counting there must have been about a hundred, no, no, about at least 70 changes, whether it was directly from teaching to organization structure to uh, yeah, uh, website updates. And I thought, wow, there's so much change here. Mm-hmm. I remember talking to one of the CEOs about it. And I said, why, why is all these changes happening? What's going on here? And he mm-hmm. says to me, don't you worry, just keep going forward. I thought, fantastic, man. So anyway, going back to the uh, point of generation, yeah, I thought, how stupid is that? Mm. (laughs) Here they are saying generation means two generations, possibly three, possibly four. I mean, how do you use the Greek word that is translated generation to mean something that it doesn't mean? Yeah. You know, and I thought, by going back to the book of, I think it was Numbers or something, where they, Exodus. Exodus, Exodus, right? Exodus. Where they pull out this. Um, I'll say that again, because I turned yeah. to you. That was Exodus. So yeah. that was in the book of Exodus. Exodus uh, 1 6 was the only verse they've ever used to try to justify this, uh, this concoction. Right. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, if you're going to give us a decent explanation of this, why don't you use Jesus' words? Mm. He's the one that who sort of yeah. said it. So why don't we use his words? But they didn't. They. Yeah. Had to find something else to try and justify right. their new teaching because yeah. obviously we're way past now a generation, way past 1914 to you know the 70, 80 years. Mm-hmm. We've gone an extra 30, 40 years, mm-hmm. and uh, who knows now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, what happened was that was my the start of my the major start, if you like, of searching. Um, of answers, wanting right. answers, questions I had and I couldn't explain. I couldn't talk to anyone else. Mm-hmm. And it was one day I was doing some research on a, and I watched our study and I typed in the title and up came the Watchtower study. Mm-hmm. And as I was going through and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking this is slightly different to the Watchtower study's format right. that I'm used to looking at. And of course it was because it was Melody Vivlon. Right. When we did watch our reviews on Melody Vivlon. Right. Yes. And I thought, wow, you know, I like what this guy's saying, you know, because that's how I'm feeling. Mm. But I had no one to talk to about. Right. And at the same time, I was a little bit felt feeling a little bit guilty Mm -hmm. because I felt a little bit disloyal to the organization, thinking I'm jumping on uh, a website that, now, as I was looking at it, realizing that it wasn't theirs, but it was a brother, as I, as I looked at it, mm-hmm. who was reviewing the website, bringing up plausible, critical thoughts mm-hmm. on <clears throat> the subjects that matter. And I thought, right. you know, like, that's that's fair enough. He's making a good point there. Yeah, I'm going to just let him know. Look, I agree with you. So I typed him a letter. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, buddy, but there's just something in there that I... You know, it was just a way to sort of justify myself. Right. I enjoyed, that was the start of opening up my mind. Mm -hmm. Realizing that not everything, um, I didn't have to be afraid to critically analyze the subject at hand from a biblical point of view. That's the real point. 
Yeah. Okay, so yes. so that was the kind of start of it. Yes. Uh, and as as you grew in understanding, as you became more and more open to critical thought, yeah. Um, then of course there's certain consequences to that, as we all know. So yes. How did you deal with those, or how are you dealing with those? Right. Um, that's a good question. Look, it, initially I was all you know. You go through many stages of anger, hurt, uh, betrayal you name it and I went through all those emotions and mm. for maybe a year or two I was angry I was um, every time I got into a discussion with a brother or sister I would point out something mm -hmm. uh, to them not in a, a way to um, create an argument but just a way to to show that something was not quite right or we weren't taught right or we were right you were wanting them to think as you were thinking. Right, exactly. And for themselves. One, that's right. And one of the subjects I approached one day was God's name in the New Testament. Mm. And I said to one of the sisters, um, I said, did you know that God's name isn't recorded in ma old manuscripts or manuscripts in the New Testament? Mm hmm and, of course, she looked at me funny and thought, like, yeah. you've got to be kidding, Frank, you know, of course it is. And I said, no, no, even the society says it isn't. Right. I said, why don't you do the research and, you know, you'll see that that's what they say, that's what they say and that's what they teach. So she does the research. She sees me the next day and she says, it's true what you said. Yeah, the, the society does say it's not in there. Mm -hmm. However, they give, us, they give us these reasons why it is. Um, and based on that, I have to agree with them. Mm. So I thought, okay, yeah, well, that's your choice, isn't it? Sure. But she did see at least that what they have, the New World Translation, have by installing God's name, have done so on their own bat, right? Not because it's in the old manuscripts, right? The manuscripts of volume. Yes. Mm. So in the sort of uh, this is just one example, but. As time went by, uh, word got around in the congregation, so I understand. I don't know who, but mm -hmm. I heard there's rumours of uh, me talking to the brothers about different aspects of the teachings. Right. Or is that you should be actually using the Bible right. to examine our teaching. Exactly. <laughs> right. So what, what, what's the fallout of all this? 30-year friendships have gone, just like that. Mm -hmm. um, brothers don't call me, just like that. Um, there hasn't been any contact other than just not long ago where a couple of elders wanted to talk to me, specifically one elder. Mm -hmm. I knocked him back <clears throat> because the basis of the conversation was that um, there were rumours, reports of rumours of me that there was talk, there was no real any explanation, no stuff, anything specific mentioned in the discussion. And I said to the brother that, look, um, it's best that those people that have spoken out should actually come back to me. Mm -hmm. Follow Matthew 18. Follow Matthew, exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. And under that arrangement, we can then sort out any disagreements. But I, no one has ever approached me and still haven't to this day. Right. So and would the elders tell you who it was? No, no, they didn't. They just wanted to meet. So yeah. and then I said, no, I'm not going to do that at all. Mm -hmm. So I stopped. But the, the fallout has been up to this point that I've lost all contact. My children, my, my, I love my kids. But two of my children, my oldest two who are baptized, um, after a few discussions, because I love them, you know, and I want them to see the light as I see it. Of course, I can't force them in any way. It's up to them. Mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, as a parent and responsible for them, I feel, you know, I feel I'm just doing my, my parents' role. My, right. my love for them is, uh, compels me to, to reach out to them and talk to them. But they have concluded that they will still talk to me but not discuss anything spiritual with me. Which sort of, mm -hmm. for me, it's a very difficult thing because our lives have been all spiritual things, you know. That is our main thrust. This is what I 
find amazing that you have children who have a father they, they've known all their lives and trusted all their lives as a source of, of knowledge. And yet when it comes to this, even though you're holding the Bible in one hand and showing them scripturally what you're saying, they would still prefer to obey men they've never met, have no knowledge of other than what's on the, on the monitor's TV screen. And, and, and actually reject the Father's advice backed up by the Word of God. I think that's, it is true. It's, it's heart-wrenching. It's, it's like a kick in the gut and mm -hmm. a punch in the face at the same time by an organization that has basically overtaken the, the father's role or the mother's role, depending on who's waking up, mm -hmm. and have usurped their authority over them whereas it should be the other way around. Right, uh, absolutely. So they've actually done that. And They're replacing the family arrangement that God himself instituted. Exactly right. They're exactly mm -hmm. right, Eric. And it's such a sad thing, and I'm sure I'm not the only father or mother that has gone through this. And I definitely feel for uh, <coughs> parents out there that are struggling to come to grips in terms um, with what's going on if, mm. if they are... Uh, find themselves in my shoes as well. It's not an easy path to be on. So when did you stop going to meetings entirely? I stopped um, at least now two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I decided that I couldn't turn up to the hall uh, and sit down and listen to the, the talks. I felt that I was, by doing so, I wasn't receiving truth. And by being in company there that I was acknowledging uh, or agreeing with the falsehoods that were being taught. In saying that, I was still listening in to the meetings over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and I was still, you know, I was still shaking my head every time I was doing it. I think, oh, <laughs> you know, yes. what a point. You know? And so I, I did do that up until maybe December of 2018. And I then publicly on my social media said that I'm an inactive person because there were many witnesses on my page and I wanted them to know that I was inactive because on my um, my social media page I was expressing critical thoughts there for my friends to mm -hmm. at least examine. I wasn't asking, telling them to leave. I wasn't saying anything like that. I wasn't saying anything negative about the organization, nor the brothers. In mm -hmm. fact, I said, look, you know, where there's agreeable thoughts on the Bible, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. However, when they've, dis when they've gone beyond the scriptures and have included their own personal views, I would say to the, these friends, look, what does Acts 5.29 say? You know, mm -hmm. what would you do? And how do they answer that? Well, I've that, been shocked by some of the answers. Right. Well, likewise, and it always falls back to that God's using this channel. Mm -hmm. So even though it seems to be at odds with the scriptures, mm -hmm. God wouldn't be using them for no reason. So therefore, they would decline the scriptures or following what it says scripturally. Right to the direction of the men. They would rather follow the men because in their mind, that was equivalent to following Jesus. Right. So right. even though the men have admitted that they are not inspired and have admitted that they make mistakes, people yes. will still follow their word as if it was God's word Right. until, until they themselves tell them, oh, we were wrong. Well, they won't even say they were wrong. They'll just change what they said before and replace it with something new. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They... It's almost like we've got our new Moses. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've replaced Jesus. We've got Moses. Right. But if you're going to go back to Moses, you might as well take all the laws with you, the 613. But they have. Mm -hmm. In effect, uh, as we know as Jehovah's Witnesses, they have given their laws, yes. which overrides the law of uh, grace, the law right. of love. That is totally in the background somewhere. You won't even see that, in fact. No. Yeah. So this is what the current the brothers are, are moving along in this, these heavy burdens of written laws, legalism, um, works, 
trying to prove themselves day in, day out, but they are being obedient and following yeah. the will of God under the direction of this governing body. And that's what they're doing. So now you've reached that stage, which many of us reach, where you want to speak out. Yes. And so you've decided to start up a, uh, a channel of your own Correct. to you know, share your experiences. And I yes. applaud that. And I think that more and more of us should be doing that same thing. That the more voices that are out there uh, sounding out the truth, uh, the greater impact we'll have on those who are still in and are still slaves to that culture of, of obedience to men. Exactly. For me, it, you know, it's it's not easy. <coughs> and look, it's not an easy thing to do. You, you realize that no matter what, no matter what you do, there will be consequences. Yeah. And you have to, it's a, it's a fear that grips you. But what I've decided is because now I'm a, a born again believer, um, I have been given a, a beautiful relationship with my father um, in the heavens and I know that I don't have to fear anything right. it is a relinquishing of my own will mm -hmm. and giving it to the Lord right. that no matter what happens whether it be good or bad tough or easy I'd rather be simple to be honest mm -hmm. with you I'd rather we just shake hands you know we can still be friends and talk they, it won't happen that way, not through this organization. We know that, that persecution no. is going to come. I know by me speaking now, there will be repercussions mm -hmm. on this uh, for me speaking out. It's the words Jesus spoke when he said that we would leave father or mother or son or, hus or son or daughter or uh, friends uh, for his sake. And even though we might lose all our friends, we would gain a hundredfold. If we only persevere. Exactly. You're proving that firsthand in your own life. Yes, I, I agree with you, Eric. And, and like it is trusting in the, the, the spirit. It is trusting in the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is saying, look, I'm going to give you, I'm relinquishing my own will and I'm going to give it to you. And I'm just going to go with it. Right. Trust in you. I know you've got my back, mm -hmm. you know. Excellent. It is a, it is a big thing, but... I'm at that point where I'm okay with it now. Mm -hmm. I'm okay to cop a few. <laughs> Not that I haven't already. <laughs> I've already copped a few right. punches, uh, but I'm I'm okay with that. You know, good or bad. You yes. know, come what may. I'm not. Um, I'm moving forward. And so with with my uh, current view, Eric is is all about now for me is um, explaining the new covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk more about the the heart how we've been given a new heart, you know, a spirit indwelling spirit, and how that works with us every day as a believer. Right. I, 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 for me, you know, it took years to understand this. You know, as a witness, we were told that, you know, unless you get that tap on the shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, unless someone, unless God sort of reaches in and tells you you're it, yeah, um, then you're just the other sheep. Right. But I've realized that, and it's taken me a while to this indoctrination to fade away, right. that it's not, a, it's not a feeling, but it's a knowing. Mm -hmm. It's a knowing that you are a child of God just through reading the scriptures and then believing in faith mm -hmm. that is the case. Right. You know, through the, through the death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. It's, it's so simple, but it's so beautiful. Once you get it. Right. Yeah. So that's what I want to encourage uh, those friends out there that are scratching their heads. You know, if they're still waiting for that feeling, maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they see it black and white, but they're still, you know, still waiting for a, a tap on the shoulder. It's not that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's so much more straightforward than that. Yes. Very yeah. true. Mm. Well, thank you very much for sharing all that with us. And uh, we wish you and pray all the best in your endeavors with the new channel and the instruction that you'll be giving and sharing with us and the experiences as well. You have our full support. Thanks, Eric. I really appreciate all your efforts and through the, uh, the website and just on a personal level, mm -hmm. how you've been a real encouragement to me and uh, you've always been there. Um, every time I've uh, had a question, 
you've responded within 24, 48 hours max. You know, you've always um, encouraged me. So I can only, I'm grateful. I'm here today because of that. And I wanted to see you just on a personal level, just to thank you personally. So thank you very much, Eric. You're most welcome. And thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks everyone. Uh, so this is my story. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen in. Um, if there's any questions that you would like to raise or ask me, please feel free to uh, drop me an email and I'll get back to you uh, as soon as possible. But thank you very much for your time. Have a good day.